Well, we must be here. We're in Keldic, so let's go off. If you remember the prologue, th that was like episode one, I believe. That was, um, it was where kind of like all hell broke loose and I guess the cannons were firing or something and like these robots came down and we were like trying to fight them and Sarah joined our t party and everything. It was pretty epic, so I'm looking forward to this. Okay. Yeah, I don't know why they make us go through this. It's like, it's, it's like they'll make you go through the whole rigmarole sometimes, and then other times, not so much. Like, the train hasn't even arrived yet. Can we just get on the damn train? What's going on here? All the security feels kind of ominous. It seems the railway and military police are guarding the opposite platform. Yeah, I wonder if... <laughs> well, isn't this quite the coincidence? Captain Claire! <laughs> it's Claire! Did you come to see me? Just a coincidence, I'm afraid. Eisengraf will be passing through here soon, so this station's operating under heightened security. Oh, right! Still, I'm happy to see you again. It's been, what, two months since I last saw you? <laughs> At any rate, good day everyone. Let me thank you again for all your help during the recent crisis in Heimdall. Eh, don't worry about it. We simply did our duty as citizens of the Empire. More importantly, what's the meaning of all this extra security? And what's this Isengraf you mentioned? As in, Iron Count, right? Eh, you'll see what I mean soon enough. Okay. Oh, okay. A special express train? It couldn't be right on time. That wouldn't be safe at all for the passengers on the train, for the conductors, for anybody in the, uh... Oh, that's Toa! Yeah, there she is. And there's Prince Oliver. Well, no wonder they didn't want to stop. I don't know how you're slowing down time, but sure, whatever. And who are you? Oh, that's the Chancellor. Well, that wasn't creepy at all. So that was Isengraf. Come to think of it, I've heard rumors of a special crimson train. It's supposedly reserved for use by members of the Imperial government. I've been on it before. It's really fast. It's pretty fancy inside, too. The Isengraf, or the Iron Count in the common parlance, it was so titled in honor of Chancellor Osborne himself. Well, I do hear him called the Blood and Iron Chancellor all the time, so I can understand the iron part. But isn't the Chancellor a commoner by birth? He is indeed. However, he was granted the title of Count by His Majesty when he was made Chancellor 11 years ago. Supposedly, that's what led to the train being given its name shortly thereafter. I see. I doubt he, of all people, sees any worth in titles or peerage. Reen? Yeah? Is something bothering you? Your attention seems elsewhere. Still feeling tired after yesterday? No, not really. I just have to catch a glance of Toa and Prince Oliver on the train as we passed by. Wow, I'm surprised you can even make them out. You must have hawk's eyes to be able to see them when the Isengraf whooshed by so quickly. Nah, it's probably just a coincidence. It was more than just a glance, though. I could see them clearly, in detail. What was that just now? Well, as long as you're not feeling unwell. Yeah, what'd you do? Use the uh, Gears of Time from Saga 3? Okay. Sweet. Well, here it comes. Yeah, looks like we didn't have to wait long after all. At least they had us, like, wait around for a purpose this time instead of just, like, waiting around for five minutes of small talk and bullshit about buying tickets.
So, can we get on board yet? Oh, hey! It's our other classmates. Hey guys, what's up? Where's Crow? Hey, there they are! Green, over here! Come on, we haven't got all day. We saved some seats. Well, if you'll excuse us, Captain. See you later, Claire. Of course. Have a safe trip, everyone. Oh, there you are. Oh, and Sarah, too. Whoa, -ho, who's that classy-looking babe? Uh, I should have just stayed on the train. Yeah, I don't think that Sarah and Claire get along. Um, if they already explained, I totally forgot. But I don't think that they get along. Someone remind me in the comments why they don't get along, if they've already explained it. We've received word from Squad 8. No unusual movements have been detected in the Twin Dragons Bridge. We've also received word from Squad 21. They report all high-speed armored cars are in position. Understood. Remain vigilant until the Isograph is finished passing through. Once it reaches Crossbell City, have all squads switched to Phase D. Yes, ma'am. Are you sure the Imperial Liberation Front will- oh, Liberation! will uh, show themselves? They will. I'm certain of it. Oh, this is nice. Some cute little farmland there. That pretty canal and everything. Why even bother saving seats? There's a billion seats on this train. I see. It sounds like Group A had quite an eventful couple of days, too. Yeah, though I find it kind of hard to believe you could have just seen the ghost of Leanne Sandlot. That's ridiculous. Are you sure you weren't just hallucinating or something? You can think whatever you like. We totally saw her, I swear. Well, ghost or not, there was definitely someone there besides us. Anyway, that's enough about ghosts and spirits for the time being. I'm more concerned about the affairs of the living. Like where Tuval and the Radiant Blade Master went. It sounds like Duke Cayenne is up to something too, and he's not someone we can afford to take lightly. We didn't run into anything like that in the URI Special Economic Zone, though I guess it makes sense, seeing as it's under the direct control of the Imperial government, and not a noble. I seem to recall that it was annexed eight years ago, is that right? Yeah, the Empire stitched it on nice and neat, without much opposition. Now it's prospering as a Special Economic Zone on the coast. It seemed like a pretty lively place and the revenue generated from taxes there goes directly to the imperial government's coffers, instead of the pockets of the nobility. It's hardly a mystery why the reformists think so highly of it. Well, that aside, I'm a little concerned about the upcoming trade conference in Crossbell. Same goes for the Imperial Liberation Front. They've been awfully quiet since that show they put on last month. Now that you mention it, that does seem rather suspicious. Is that related somehow to why we're going to Gorelia Fortress? Well, it's not the main reason, but it's not entirely unrelated. Well, I'll let you look forward to finding out about it when we get to the fortress itself. Anyway, how many of you have passed through the Gorelia Fortress by train before? <laughs> I see. Just us, huh? I can't wait to see everybody's first reactions. True. Why is that? Well, I've seen it in photographs at least. A camera really can't come capture how ridiculous it is. It's supposed to be this macho gateway to the Empire, but it just seems like it's trying way too hard. What's that supposed to mean? The gateway to the Empire is one of the largest military bases in the country. I look forward to the chance to see it in person then. Well, off we go. You know, I appreciate like the breadth of the Empire and how they're trying to make it seem like it really is this big area, and it is, but sometimes this drags. Okay. Perfect. I love the quick jumping on through. Okay, there we go. Okay. Oh, that was kind of... It sounded pretty severe for a train announcement. Well, we are passing through a military facility. I don't think that they're being unreasonable. Do you really think that's the issue here? 
I'm not sure having that be one of the first things foreign visitors here gives a very good impression of the country. Oh, we're finally here. What in Adios' name is that? Oh, wow, that thing is huge, isn't it? It's more like a tank or something, like holy crap. I wonder why they would color it green. Like, why don't, wouldn't you just leave it, you know, red, like the colors of the Empire? Scales just. This is Corellia Fortress. This entire place is built from iron and concrete? Just how much money has the army dumped into building all of this? Yeah, that was about as entertaining as I'd hoped. Not that I'm surprised. I thought the same things when I first saw it. From the Crossfell side, all you can see is a cliff, though. Yeah, but those two railway guns still poke out through it. Hey, instructor, what'd you bring us out here to show us? What else? We're here so you can see the true essence of what makes an army, what comprises the military's strength and form, forms its foundation, and what other place in the Empire has that on display as clearly as here. Well, she's got a point, I've got to say. You know, it doesn't seem like a very secure fortress if the, pl if the train just goes right underneath it. You could also, like, march an army underneath it, right through here, and just bypass the entire fortress, or just set bombs or whatever under here, and blow the whole damn thing up. And if it's a sheer cliff on the other side, how does the train keep going on through? Who are they? Engineers and tradesmen, mostly. You'll see a lot of them around here. Keeping a fortress this size up and running is a full-time job for more than just the military's people. So it seems. It's almost like its own town here. On the other side of this fortress, it's more or less a straight shot to Crossbow City, right? To think that such a bustling center of trade is so close to a massive military facility like this. Yeah, Crossbow City's only about 30 minutes away by train. From the top of the fortress, you can even see the skyscraper where the trade conference is going to take place. I see you've arrived. Oh, that instructor. Instructor Nightheart. Good morning, instru uh, Major Nightheart. Instructor Ballastine of Thor's Military Academy, homeroom teacher for Class 7, reporting the arrival of myself and all students in my care. Acknowledging your arrival at 11.30 hours, welcome to Gorelia Fortress. In addition to my teaching duties at the Academy, I hold the rank of Major in the Imperial Army's 4th Armored Division. I'll be acting as your guide, as well as your instructor for special lectures during your time here at the Fortress. Now, if you'll follow me... Nice looking place. Can't really complain. It's big enough. Including today, you have two days remaining in this month's field study. However, we won't be assigning you any tasks during that time. Instead, you'll be participating in a series of special lectures and a field trip. A field trip? Here? So what exactly does that entail, Instructor? At 1400 hours today, a joint military exercise will be taking place at Corellia's training grounds. The 4th and 5th Armored Divisions will both be participating, and you'll be observing it. We're going to watch a military exercise? The 4th Armored Division, huh? Well, it's led by none other than Elliot's dad, Lieutenant General Olaf Craig. By all accounts, it's one of the strongest armored divisions in the Imperial Army. And did you know that our friend the Major here is their most promising young member? It's true. Moving on. As I said, you'll only be observing this exercise, not actively participating. I imagine that has some of you feeling rather relieved, doesn't it? It does sound like a pretty easy assignment after all. But we'll see how many of you feel the same after experiencing it for yourselves. That's all from me. It's currently 11.50 hours. Lunch has been prepared for you in the mess hall. I advise you all to eat. 
Your field trip isn't something to be undertaken on an empty stomach. This looks decidedly unappetizing. So, this food. We have salty corned beef, and I think I'm getting a hint of peas from this soup. You could use this bread as a lethal projectile. I do think it wouldn't have hurt to use a few more herbs or flavors in general. Calling this edible would be generous. I've heard plenty of rumors about the food they serve in the Imperial Army, but I wouldn't have guessed they'd all be true. I didn't think the food they served in the mess hall at Zender Gate was all that bad, though. I don't think it would kill them to serve something a little more appetizing. This is the exact same thing they served when I came here with my class last year. Probably from the same batch, too, by the look of it. Really brings back memories. I was pretty surprised the first time my dad bought me here to eat, too. You guys really think it's that bad? It really brings back memories for you, me, too. At least there's some cheese and an apple. The food served in the army makes use of common ingredients that are easy to preserve and store. The ingredients used to make all the food in your trays can be easily stockpiled in large quantities, so even if a war were to break out, a meal like this could still be served without any trouble. Oh, so that explains it. I see. So the army serves simple foods all the time to avoid the decrease in morale from wartime rationing? Well, not all the time. However, one can think of this food as a philosophical statement from the continent's strongest army, in the sense that it suggests that soldiers should live and work each day as though a war effort depends on them. Every day? So they should just be as tense during times of peace as during times of war? Well, it's a bit too much mind over matter idealism for my tastes, but it's worth being aware of. And to throw a different perspective in the mix here, the food the provincial army serve is actually pretty good. Good enough that you can't help but wonder how they'd cope if an actual war to ever break out. Well, it's not like serving good food means that you have a crappy army. I hear our neighbor liberal serves up some pretty tasty food in their army. Liberal's army is fairly elite, probably because the threat of being neighbors of the Empire keeps them tense. I feel a little conflicted hearing you say that. Well, these things are all about finding a good balance. Variety is the spice of life, you know. If you eat nothing but dull, bland food all the time, well, you know what they say, you are what you eat. I can do with a few of your polite remarks on my diet, Instructor Palestine. Anyway, as you heard, there's going to be a military exercise at the training ground at 2 in the afternoon today. It's 12.30 right now, so you have an hour to do whatever you like. They'll make an announcement half an hour before, so be sure to listen for it and do whatever it tells you. Understood. So when you say whatever we like, does that mean that we can tour the fortress? Of course. You're welcome to roam around, as long as you don't poke your nose in any restricted areas. So go ahead and explore. There's plenty worth seeing here, like the command center. Though if you're feeling a little tired from your field study so far, you're welcome to rest in your rooms. It'd be a shame to waste such a valuable opportunity. I suppose I should at least get a general overview of the fortress. Well, we have a little bit of time left, and our next task is to go exploring all over the place and, uh, you know, check out all these different red exclamation points and all that good stuff. But I don't really want to get too in-depth into that right now, um, because that will take a while, and that's really what I'm planning on doing uh, next time. So I'm just going to leave it here, and we'll look at the Imperial Chronicle. And then, next time, we are going to, uh, go exploring. This has been David. If you like this, please like, comment, and subscribe. And, happy watching!